All right, so Dylan Johnson made a video about this and I was also talking to my friend who I sort of coach at the moment about his year. So I thought, why not actually talk about my training for next year? Now, obviously, I it all depends quite a lot on like where your goals are and all the rest of it about how exactly you should should do it. But I think there's some overriding principles that almost everyone could, you know, use, gain some information from. So this is my training peaks here. Um, and basically, I've had a bit of a disaster. Somehow I managed to ride into my friend and broke my elbow. I don't really understand how both of it happened. Both of us were sort of in shock at the time of like, how are we so, such, so stupid? I haven't really talked about my elbow much, but it, basically it's fine. It, like I've got this little bandage thing on now, but it doesn't hurt or anything. Um, and they just put some meta in and it will all be okay. So anyway, I crashed um, on this day here on Wednesday, the 5th of January, had a big week planned. And basically I was just doing my classic Charlie whack December, January, like 20 hour weeks consistently, just to really get a big training volume early on in the year and then do some more intensity later on. Um, I mean, you can see from here, like there was already probably quite a lot of intensity in the week. I still like to do intensity when I'm doing big hours, um, but it's just rained back a little bit. So obviously that's taken a little bit of time off, but to be honest, I'm not too worried about it. Like. At the end of the day, it was only about a week or two and I was feeling a bit tired for no real reason. Like I had some weeks off, but just didn't really recover. So if anything, it's probably not a bad thing that I had some time off. So you actually look at it. So I had a week fully off. I rode twice, then I had my elbow surgery on Friday. Um, and then after that, I'm basically just riding on the turbo. Now, I'm not sure when I'm gonna be outside again. Um, I mean, it's a bit annoying. I really dislike the turbo training, which is what the video I made yesterday of. But at the same time, I don't really think it's a huge disaster for what I'm tra targeting at the moment. So my big goals early on in the year was just some road races and time trials that I had planned. Um, it was gonna be my first year of road racing since like 2019, because obviously I crashed in 2019. In 2020, there was no road racing. 2021, I was focusing on TTs and like, I didn't really know if there was gonna be road races, so I just didn't do it. Um, but then, yeah, this year was gonna be my first one. Obviously I had some sort of rough um, events that I wanted to do well in, um, which you can see here. but. I mean, they're basically all useless, the ones early on. But I think what I'm gonna sh say is that I think realistically what most people should be doing, unless your peak is literally like July, I think is just a lot of hours early on, as many as you can do, just real zone two. And I think even if you can only do 10, 15 hours a week, I think it's just quite good to do that. And people might say, well, you're gonna overtrain, but it's like, yeah, okay, you can do one maintenance intensity session. But I think the main thing is it's quite good to just give your body a little bit of rest, give your mind a little bit of rest, and then just build up. So um, at the moment, like I'm not really doing any intervals. I'm gonna start just doing some bit of tempo, just of like, just to you know see where I'm at roughly. But I'm not really too stressed about it um, because my basically the only time I know I'm definitely able to ride outside for and definitely race is um, Bucks Ten, which is like the Uni Champs. So it's like basically all the Unis race, um, and that's on the 30th of April. So it's it's quite a long time. It's not really ideal because I'm gonna have exams and stuff before it. But I think having said that, I could probably do minimal volume. Uh, for I mean, it will be like a 20 minute ish event. I mean, over 20 minutes for me, let's be honest. Um, but anyway, so I think the, the question is how, how are you gonna train for that? And I think it's quite simple really. You just sort of like, I don't know what is going on with training piece. But anyway, I think you basically just go from the initial like solid principles of I'm gonna start just doing you like tempo uh, and endurance, but you know, I've done a lot of that, so I don't need to do too much. So this is basically gonna be like the first bit um, just before maybe like the rest of um, January, I'm just gonna do some tempo, a couple of efforts, just see where I'm at. I'm not really too stressed. Um, and then on the 31st of January, I'm gonna get my cast off hopefully, and it'll be a bit more pleasant in the turbo because it won't get as hot as sweaty, um, which is always nice. And then yeah, do a bit more. And I'm gonna do a 20 minute test. Um, it'll probably be on a road bike just because my TT bike's not set up yet. Uh, but again, that that's just you know a good indicator, just see roughly where I'm at. And then I know the difference between my road bike and TT, like it's like 10, 15 watts, so just, dial that down when I start doing TT efforts. And then the first part, as you can see, is just gonna be threshold blocks. And I haven't really put it all into training peaks, but it's basically just spending two times a week, just spending more and more time progressively at threshold, um, getting used to it, doing over-unders is, is what I really prefer to do. I think it just works better. It's more like a race and I just think the gains are, are higher. Um, and then after that, I think because it's such a short effort, I then really wanna focus on VO2. I also know personally that when I start doing VO2 efforts, I really improve. So we're gonna do classic like five by eight, 30 15s, and some six minute intervals, um, and maybe some short ones I haven't quite decided yet. But I think that's the point. The, the point of this, this video is that you don't need very long to get fit realistically. If you can keep a good base going, like you probably need, I'd say for like a proper from like, I'm not really riding a bike at all to like almost top fitness for me, I'd say is like, 
maybe 10, 10 to 12 weeks. Like, and so it's not that long. And if you've already done a little bit, it's probably only like six or eight weeks of like real just focused intensity. And I think the more you ride, the less time it takes to get to the top intensity because you're just sort of used to it. I think it's an interesting point of like, I was listening to Mitch Docker's podcast and he was talking about, obviously he's no longer a pro anymore. Like what would he do? And the guy was like, yeah, you could go world tour again, like race a world, a world tour one day race in six weeks if you just train properly, because he has that base. And I think it's true. Like, obviously I'm not comparing myself to him in terms of training history and stuff, but I think it's the same sort of idea of that. Like if you train a decent amount, you don't need a crazy amount to get fit. And I also think the other thing is that like, if you train a long time without racing, I think it can get a bit dull and repetitive. So I think sometimes it's best not to always do that and have some goals and then have many, a couple peaks in a year. Like if you look at pro cyclists, they're generally, you know, have one big peak, but they'll have other small peaks and have time off. I think that's the other thing is like, once you have your peak, you need to have time off because otherwise you don't get better. And there seems to be this thing where people think, oh, if I just keep training, it doesn't, it will keep going. But it just doesn't, I don't really know why, but it just doesn't work like that. You just need to have time off and then sort of go again. And then it generally, works itself out and I also think the other thing to think about especially if you're like a younger person is to think about long term like in three four years because I think sometimes it's quite easy to get focused on like well I just want to peak for this you're like yeah but like is that the detriment in two years time because you think ultimately like let's say you know you do want to get in like three four years you want to be really really strong maybe you want to make pro or something and you're a younger guy that old guy or girl I think it's important to like think well ultimately what I need to do is get my threshold this much, increase my endurance this much, and things like that, like your endurance just takes so long to do. I think sometimes it's it's important not to focus on like, you know, super, super peaking for something, but just like, you know, getting better at it, having some time off and then just keeping it and not necessarily doing it like how other people may do it where they peak and then just like hold on for form. It's like, you just got to think long term. But I guess it's all up to you. But anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um, you'll see me on, on the turbo the whole time, which is going to be grim, but I think you just have to get used to it. And like, at the end of the day, it's not too bad if you just admit that it's the only option, it's that or not riding a bike, and I'd rather do that than not ride a bike. But anyway, I think tomorrow I'm gonna have a video on Azure Desert's training camp just before their French races, um, which are next weekend. Um, they had a camp in Calpe with my new favorite man, Champuzan, who did seven watts per kilo for like 18, 19 minutes. So we'll, we'll go through some of his data, see what the AG to our boys were doing. Um, and it's always interesting to see the sort of intensities pros often do in January because they're tr really trying to peak for maybe March, April, um, in comparison to other people like Tour de France riders who are literally peaking in July and just noodling around quite a lot at this time of year. So anyway, cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.